Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to another AWS hands-on tutorial. In this video, we'll look at Amazon EventBridge. Formerly called Amazon CloudWatch Events, Amazon EventBridge is a serverless event bus service that uses events to connect loosely coupled application components together, making it easy to build scalable event-driven applications. In this video, we'll use EventBridge to invoke a Lambda function using an S3 event pattern, as well as from a scheduled event. To get started, I've granted administrator access privileges to my IAM user and configured a local profile. I also use the AWS CLI to create an S3 bucket and enable the event bridge notification configuration, which will allow S3 to send event notifications to EventBridge. Now I'll jump into Lambda and create a new function, giving it a name of my target function, a runtime of Python 3.9, then create the function. I'll replace the default code with new code that imports logging, instantiates an instance of a logger, and then when the lambda handler function is invoked, I'll log a message event object from event rule, as well as the event that's passed in to the handler. I'll also create headers in body and then return a JSON object with status code, headers, and body, which is the event. Now I'll go ahead and deploy this. Then jump into the event bridge console. To get started, I'll click the Create Rule button, give the rule a name, I'll leave the default event bus, and the rule type will be a rule with an event pattern. I'll click Next. The event source will be an AWS event from an AWS service. The service will be S3, and the event type will be object level API call via CloudTrail. Here I'll listen for specific operations for put object and delete object on a specific bucket and provide the name of my bucket. And here we see an event pattern was created for us. However, I'm going to click to edit the pattern and replace it with this JSON pattern, which has a detail type for object created and object deleted. Its source is AWS S3, and the detail for the bucket name is the name of the bucket I created earlier. Now I'll click Next and select a target. The target will be an AWS service. The service will be a Lambda function, and I'll select my function. I'll click Next, Next, and then create the rule. And now we can test our rule. So I'll jump into S3 and upload a file. Then jump over to EventBridge, select the rule, and here we see our rule pattern listening for object create from S3 on our bucket with a target of the Lambda function. If I click on monitoring, I'll switch to one hour and you'll notice that there's some delay between when the event is triggered and when it's displayed in the monitoring tab. So for now, I'll jump over to Lambda, click into the monitor tab here also switch to an hour, and again, there'll be a delay. But I'll go ahead and click View CloudWatch Logs, and then click into the log stream for the function. And here we see our event object from event rule notification. And if we expand the next line, we'll see the event detail, which was object created, with the source being AWS S3 as well as the bucket name 
and the object that was created. Now I'll jump back into Lambda, refresh the monitoring, and here we see one invocation, which was successful. Now I'll jump back over to EventBridge, refresh the monitoring, which again will take some time. So I'll pause the video until the invocation and triggered rules are displayed in the event bridge monitoring tab. Okay, it took several minutes, but now we see we have one invocation and one triggered rule. So let's jump back into S3, and this time we'll delete the file. Now I'll jump back over to Lambda, go back into CloudWatch Logs, Click on the new log stream. Again, we see our message. And this time we have an entry for a detail type of object deleted. Again, the source is S3 with the bucket name and the object. Now, if we go back to the Lambda monitoring tab and refresh, we see our second invocation, which was also successful. And if we go back to EventBridge and refresh after several minutes, we see the second invocation and second triggered rule. Okay, so now we have a successful Amazon EventBridge rule, which is triggered by an event pattern from S3 and invokes our Lambda function target. So what I wanna do now is create a new rule I'll give it a name of my scheduled rule for Lambda. And then this time the rule type will be a schedule. Now I'll continue to create the rule and set the scheduled pattern to be a schedule that runs at a regular rate. I'll enter five minutes for the rate, then click next. And again, specify the target, which is an AWS service for Lambda and select my function. Click next, next, and create the rule. Now I'll go into the rule and here we see the event schedule is a fixed rate of five minutes and the target is the Lambda function. Now I'll click monitoring then jump over to Lambda, then go into CloudWatch logs and here we see our third log stream with our message event object from event rule with this time the detailed type being a scheduled event with a source from AWS events. Now let's go back to Lambda and refresh the monitoring tab. And here we see our third invocation, which of course was successful. Now let's jump over to event bridge and after some time, we'll refresh. And here's our invocation and triggered rule. Now, if we wait five more minutes and jump over to CloudWatch and go back into the log stream, we see our second message and our second scheduled event. And here's the second scheduled event in Lambda, which was successful as well as an event bridge after some time. So that concludes this video on invoking a Lambda function using an S3 event pattern and scheduled event in Amazon event bridge. If you found it useful, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to be notified when I add more content to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.